Dude, that fish is so soft and it's flaky. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Cheers. That's really good. Fish fry. Yep, there you go. And for lunch? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Mike caught some fish. Amazing halibut. We're gonna have a fish fry. Check it out. I'm gonna teach you how to get your batter like this. And then we're gonna make some sandwiches for the staff. So Mike went fishing and he caught the most amazing halibut ever off the Alaskan coast. Um, we have it right here. Look, see, it says Brewer. That's Mike right there. Um, we're gonna open it up and have a go with making some awesome like beer battered fried fish. Talk about the batter and how, how to make it crispier and better and last longer. And um, if y'all don't know who Mike is, Mike's our, our camera guy right there, our videographer. Mike, say hi. Hey, what's up everybody? And uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna banner a little bit so he can tell us about his trip while we just mix up some batter and uh, come along for the ride, guys. Let's go. You wanna make sure that the fish is super dry. It's gonna fry up a lot better and have the batter stick to it if it starts out drier. You can see they retain a lot of moisture, especially if you've, if you've frozen them or flash frozen them. So let's just get these out over here and we'll start patting them dry. I have some ice in my bowl, just making sure that the fish stays as cold as possible. When you're frying up fish, you really want the batter to be cold, the fish to be cold. It's a lot, it's a lot better for the, the end result. So tell me about the Alaska trip. Like where did you, did you just put the camera down and get over here for a second? Hey Lucas, can you take the camera? Oh man, this fish looks good. Dude, you gotta make sure that it's super dry before you uh, before you trim it up and fry it. It has so much moisture in it, you could just like squeeze it out. So where, where did you go? So, um, hopped on a bush plane and- Like one of the little seaplanes? Yeah, a little sea, sea Dude, plane. Dude, I'm doing that this weekend. In Juneau, Alaska, that's cool. That's way cool. Um, yeah, went to Juneau, Alaska. It's about 70 miles west of Juneau to a little place called Elfin Cove. And we did a full week of fishing halibut and salmon. And my wife caught a 143 pound halibut. And that's what this is. That's so cool. It was literally taller than her. That's way cool. Do you have pictures <laughs> of it? Yeah. So we were there for a week, a uh, cool lodge called Water's Edge. And we just fished all week and had fun. and. Dude, that sounds like reaping the, the benefit of the that sounds trip. like the blast. Yeah, Mike had like this giant cooler at home. He said he had like salmon in all this different stuff. I'm like, dude, bring me some in. Let's mess with the halibut. I want fresh halibut. And it was all DIY, so we didn't know what we were doing. So they get they give us boats and we just go out in the open water. So you didn't fish. even have a tour guide. You we just didn't even went. Have a guide, yeah. That's the coolest thing ever. Get up on the side. That's the biggest fish I've ever seen. So if you're looking for a cool trip, Water's Edge, Alaska. Uh, this camera's getting heavy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take the camera, Lucas. So um, we have these all broken down. We're gonna finish up this last filet. So all I'm doing is about half an inch. Um, I want them to be thick. The, the fresh halibut is gonna be so amazing after we fry it, and I don't want there to be so much batter on it that it takes away from the fish. Um, and with it being such amazing uh, fillets and larger portions, why would we wanna like break it down? Normally you get like fried fish at restaurants, it's a lot smaller, um, because they tend to not have the best fish there, or it tends to be expensive if they give you more. So in this case, Mike just donated pounds of halibut so why not just make bigger portions and make it a lot more a lot more fun i have the flour mixed up i mix it up ahead of time if you want to check out the flour links in the description below as always for all recipe content i'm just going to take some of this flour right here and we'll say um i don't know like a cup and a half right we don't need that much we'll take some of that flour because all of this is just for just on the outside dredging so um <laughs> That looks good. We have our to cutthroat right here. See, cold, can you see how cold it is? You gotta have the condensation. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, no, so yeah, cold. So that's cold. And then normally, we're not gonna go that hard, but normally I'll mix this or like make sure the flour is cold too. So we're gonna add this in, give it a little whisk. And then um, you just want it to be kind of tempura batter style, like not too light or I guess not too runny, not too thick, just uh, perfect. And I'll show you what perfect looks like. 
mix this up. We might need to go open another one, which should be nice because like we're filming early in the morning. What time is it? It's like 9.30. I'm not gonna waste that beer. I'm gonna drink it. Just saying. You won't. I will. You won't. Hold on, let me get another one because they're in the fridge. You're right, I won't. <laughs> Just keep going. So what are you looking for when you make the batter? I want it to be... Have you ever, have you ever seen a tampura batter? before yeah it, um pancake battery wet style pancake see like this is like it's obviously runny but it's very thick runny see like this how it kind of like this is what you want this is pretty good and then um we're just gonna take like a little baking soda and that's gonna help with the any day now there like that like that much not a lot there you go. A little bit of baking soda in there. Mix it up. Make sure there's not a lot of lumps. But also keeping in mind that the more I mix it, the less CO2 that's in it. And yada, 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 yada. We're going to salt and pepper it. A little fresh pepper on it. So we'll just set these guys over here. Off to the side. Get them in the flour. So just um, flour. The flour sticks to it just like this. The oil's right here. It's 350 degrees. This dunks in, and see how it just, um, just like that. And you just do one of these, cause it's gonna do that anyway. And then slowly lay it down. So I found the photo of the fish that we got. Oh, let's see. Holy sh Dude, how tall is your wife? 5'7". I'm 5'7". It's okay. Yeah. So that's what we're eating today. Uh, is this? Mm. Lovely morning beer. Go away. So what temperature is the oil and how long do you cook it for? The oil's 350. That's like your go-to temp for almost everything, oven or oil. Um, in this case, it's really good because we're not double frying anything. And um, the fish cooks really fast. So we got 350 on the oil and we're taking the fish. Fish, you know, 145, done. But in this case, I wanna make sure that the, the skin is really, really crispy. Or not the skin, the batter is really, really crispy. So we're just giving it a little bit longer. So if the fish comes out under 170, like in that 60, 50 area, I'm okay with that because what that's gonna do is going to be perfect for the batter. It's gonna allow the batter to crisp up better all right, this is the last of the fish. We're gonna take this out super fast right here. Let's make a really fast tartar sauce while that's uh, kind of cooling. It's really hot. Some mayonnaise. Just eyeballing this? Yeah, we're just cooking with a heart, man. So uh, we got, this is like pickled ginger. You can buy it to store, like the Asian food area. I'm just gonna take that, throw it in with the mayo and blitz it. We have togarashi. This is like a Japanese seven spice. It's got like a nice spicy kick to it. Add a lemon to that. Catch the seeds, don't blend the seeds in. We'll stick blend that really fast. That smells really good actually. You can start seeing like the color and the consistency of that, it that loosening cheese. up. We're gonna take the, the relish like this and we're gonna add some of the sweet relish in and fold that up. And then we're gonna dice a, a red onion. Just fold that in. Okay, mix this up. That's a lot. Probably shouldn't have made that much, but a little salt, a little pepper. The ginger really brightens the flavor. And I like my fried food to have a bit of a kick to it. That's just me. So I like the togarashi in there. Okay, look, there. Tartar sauce, fish, taste test! All right, gotta have a bite. Dude, Luke? no, put that, get Lucas in here. Come over here. Do it. Come around here. Okay. Good. You ready? Look, check this out. These look amazing. You can... Cheers. You can hear the crispy. Look, hold on. Where's the? Okay, you gotta... We just grab. We just grab little ones. Look at the flakes, man. Little. 
So, this fish took an hour to get in the boat. Mm. So, better be worth it. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm, God. Mm. My wife's going to kill me because she's not even here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Check this out. Hold on. So we're gonna take. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna take tartar sauce on it, right? And then listen, hold on. Hmm. Hmm. But just look at it. Look. You see like the dill in it, but look at the little bubbles that form inside the crust and the batter from the way the CO2 is and how cold it is when it hits that. You can just see. Like these little bits that are on it. It's so crusty. And then this is the first one that we ever made. So this one right here is the first one. And out of curiosity, that was like, I don't know, 20 minutes ago when the first one came off. And it's still rolling. So we're still at good temperature holding. So let's make some sandwiches and feed some people. So I, I will say though, like this beats any fish and chips at a restaurant. Like, you nailed it, man. With, especially with that sauce. That's really good. So we have some awesome French bread. Uh, I just whipped up this really simple slaw with some mayo, sugar, salt, pepper, a little bit of vinegar, some red wine vinegar. It's got a red cabbage, green cabbage, a little bit of kale, some carrots, green onions in it. Um, check this out. I don't even care about toasting at this point because I don't have anything out here to toast. We're just going to... Slice this baby open. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, no. Slather. Look. Slather. Slather the sauce. Dude. Yeah. Slather. Look. Perfect amount, too. Just cover it. And the end... Like so, like that, fish, a little bit on the end, there you go. This guy goes over here, there's plenty of room for him, he lives here, maybe like that, hey, he, he stays there. Okay, we need, um, we need some onion, okay, some onion, like that. Give it like a really fast julienne. Like that. Look, some onion. Break it up. Get some of the acid in there. There you go. Get our, our slaw right on top. Boom. That's how you make a staff meal. That's how you fry fish. Let's get it. Just like that. Mm. That's like one of the best things we've ever made out here. We say that a lot. Guys, if you dug this fish fry so much, you're loving our content, make sure you like and subscribe for the next video. Let us know in the comments what you want to see us do. We'll try to make it happen.